Yo, Elliot, breakthrough. I'm now an independent business owner, franchise to be exact. Since the beginning of the program, I've been stay, I've stayed in the being. At the time I was heading to become a fitness trainer or truck driver. Now I'm running a route, running the business, making the most money I've ever made in my life. Not a millionaire just yet, but ends are being met at a better place in life for myself and my family. I can't shake this presence, uh, this presence, thought, and feeling of imminent danger, though. The danger of a kinetic war coming to the United States, primarily towards Christians. I've been seeing documentaries of World War II. I can't help but to compare the times of then to today. I have a sense of wanting to join the military, not out of benefit, but purely out of defense of our way of life and family. The difference between World War II compared to today is that we see this coming months or years away, uh, away from today. Am I a bad father for having these thoughts, a sense of military duty to prepare? I mean, you got a few PSs here, but I wanna, I wanna answer that. I wanna work with you on that. So you say, am I a bad father for having thoughts, uh, a sense of, of military duty to prepare? Listen, I don't, I could be wrong, but I don't think the military is going to save us from anything. I don't think, I think if there is a war that essentially we're on our own and that the, um, that the second amendment will start to make a lot more sense to people when they realize that it's not only about the right to bear arms, but also to form a militia. We, that's, what the, that's what the second amendment says. It says that the American people are essentially to be a standing army. And that's what we really are when we fulfill that obligation. I don't think that uh, that amendment to the Constitution is arbitrary, or or uh, or uh, you can choose it. What is it? Choose it or leave it. Right? It's not one of these things where you can just take it or leave it. It's mandatory. That's what I wanted to say. It's mandatory. It's mandatory that we arm ourselves and we form militia. Why? For this very thing. If there's a kinetic attack, it's because our government has failed us. And part of the way our government is, is going to fail us or is failing us is by weakening our military. Have you heard that there was a war simulation done in the UK uh, with, uh, it was just like a practice between the UK and the American army and the, and the Americans, we were destroyed. I'm just here and then look at our commander in chief, what he did in Afghanistan. Look at what's going on with the medicine and how all the military is forced. Look at all the women in the military. I was looking, I was watching an article the other day or watching a video the other day where they're talking about how all the standards for the military are being lowered so that they can be woke. And then you have the transgenderism and the whole rainbow cult that has infiltrated the military. I'm not so sure any longer that the military is a good choice, particularly at this point in our, in our uh, lives and in point to, in the history of our country. And you being a father and a husband, right? You're, you're a family man, or that's what's happening. It's unfolding in your life. I think it is much more important for you to learn how to protect yourself and your own family. I would say, start taking some firearms classes. Like for example, we're gonna be doing the King Transformation Meetup at Full Spectrum Warrior in February. I would love to have you there because we're going to be learning from my friend Rich Graham, plus a bunch of other guys who are ex-military, right? Uh, Rich is actually a Navy SEAL. He's a former Navy SEAL. All these guys. And I hire them. I pay these guys to learn how to use firearms, I, to how to do close quarter combats, how to clear a house, how to how to hold a gun when you're when there's someone in your door, right? Like in the room, like he was showing us how to like inch our way into a door, into a doorway. My point is that you can, you can join classes, you could hire experts, you can learn what it takes to be a pro protector, but I think that it is better to stay as a part of your community. Uh, that I think is what's going to be required. I, and that's what the militia is all about bringing things home to the family, bringing things home to the community, bringing things home to your locale. That's really where the power lies. It's in the grassroots. We've taken everything to the federal level and the federals, the feds, the government has destroyed it. Whenever we outsource the basic things like protection, food, education to an almighty government, we become their slaves. They become our God. 
the only thing that the government is there to do is to protect our rights. That's really their only obligation is to protect our rights. But in many ways, by us giving them this much responsibility over our lives, they have our rights. The more you give away your responsibility, the more you give away your rights. We're no longer responsible for protecting ourselves. We're no longer responsible for providing for ourselves. We're no longer responsible for educating ourselves. We're not really responsible for very much of anything because we've given our power and sovereignty over weight to the government. I don't think waiting for the military or joining the military at this time is going to be beneficial to the future of you and your family. That's the point that I wanna make there. Learn how to be proficient with firearms, learn firearm safety, learn how to, how to keep it, learn how to clean it, learn how to use it. That's, that's really what's most important. The next step you'd wanna take, and you know, this, is, this might get me put on a, on a list or something, uh, but I have to say it because it's in the constitution, is to look for other like-minded men who are willing to get together in a defensive posture in building a militia. There are lots of states. I know we have one here in Florida. I went to a couple of their meetings, Florida, and, and, and they have it broken up into districts. Look in your state, see if there is a local militia, right? They may have to, and if they're doing it right, in many ways, they would be doing it in conjunction with the local law enforcement. Now, not every local law enforcement is on your side, but you're seeing more and more that they are, right? I'm seeing a lot of these, uh, I see a lot of police chiefs and a lot of these woke cities like Chicago and stuff who are saying, we're no longer playing your game, government. We are going to do our own thing. And so I think the, 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 the mayor of Chicago, Lightfoot, she's the one that looks like Beetlejuice. Um, she's, she's calling it an insurrection. But the police chief is saying, no, we're not going to play your stupid woke games and we're not going to go around enforcing mass mandates. Oh, and we're not going to force our guys to take the shot no matter what you say. So there are a lot of liberty minded, um, dare I say, rebellious or free thinking, liberty leaning police forces. It, it depends on what city you're in. But I would I would invite you to explore the militia, look into the militia and then ask them if they are working in conjunction with the sheriff and the police department that would be that would be a good idea in my opinion i don't think you want to be rogue i don't think you want a rogue militia <laughs> although they exist because like i said a lot of police forces are just not they're not going to comply but i've read some articles and some books about people who start militias but then they do it in conjunction with the with the police force so that they let the police force know hey look you know um we recognize your authority, but we also recognize our responsibility to form and train, right? That's what it says in the constitution too. It says, don't just train, uh, start a militia, but you got to train. I, I wish I had the words right here. I have a copy of the constitution right here somewhere, but anyway, I'm not going to go look for it. <laughs> but the point is that it says that, it sh that you should be training. It is your responsibility to be training. So I say that. Now, let's back up a little bit. You say, am I a bad father for having these thoughts? No, you're a great father for having these thoughts. Like I said earlier in a previous question, I only started taking on the weight and responsibility of fatherhood maybe about five, six years ago. And that's when I started training with firearms. I realized that the lives of these people are under my, they're, they're, they're under my authority and responsibility. Something happens to my family, something happens to your family. The buck socks with the man, no matter what feminists say or what women think when they're trying to be strong and independent, when the bottom, when shit hits the fan, who do they look at? Well, well where's your father? Where's the man? What did he do? Right. But of course, because we've outsourced everything, the government is the daddy now. So they really ask is, you know, is the government involved? Right. That's really what it is. Instead of where's your father? It's, uh, you know, where's the agencies? Right. Where's uh, where's uh, child protective services or or uh, welfare and stuff like that. So they basically usurp the power of the father but for you to be thinking that you the way you're thinking is normal it's natural and it's dignified you should be thinking about that just not in terms of joining the military i no longer i'm going to say this today for the first time but i no longer i no longer think joining the american military is a viable option they've turned against us not the men in the military not the guys who are you know in the ranks I'm talking about the leadership. I'm talking about the Pentagon. You know, they've turned against us. There's no question about it. They're, they're, and they're weakening our forces. So anyway, so you say, I can't shake this thought and feeling of imminent danger. 
the danger of a kinetic war coming to the United States, and then of course, persecutions against Christians. Uh, here's a few things that I would like you to sort of just consider. Number one, let's pretend that it's really going to happen, right? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of indicators that that can happen. You know, there can be a kinetic attack that comes from the north, right? Because you get Chinese troops that are training in Canada. I mean, Trudeau has allowed it and everybody knows it. They're there, Chinese troops training in the winter up in Canada. We also have open borders on the south, on the south and we've got a lot of people who aren't Mexican, right? People just want to come into the and coming to the United States, coming to the South border. So there could be an attack from the South, can be attacked from the North and the coasts, not to say that this is true, but I've heard whisperings of the fact that all those um, shipping containers that are on the coast could be there for a number of reasons beyond just the fact that there's a trade embargo, which there really is. And it's happening from the inside out. Why isn't our government allowing supplies to come to us because they're embargoing us because they want us to join their new world uh, order and they want everybody, they want to collapse the economy. They're doing this on purpose. So the embargo is against us, but to, who's to say that if our own government is willing to embargo us, right, is, is willing to cut off supplies to us, that they are not helping plan an attack or allowing an attack uh, to come in through those shipping containers, right? Who knows what's in some of those shipping containers? There could be land invasion equipment in those shipping containers. They could also be there as a form of protection as well. But who knows what the topsy-turvy world that we live in, I don't believe anything. And I always err on the side of caution right now. That all being said, right, land invasion and persecution, the number one thing that we can do in that regard beyond just basic prepping, right? Basic prepping just means know how to use a firearm and have enough food for, you know, 90 days or something like that, right? Basic stuff. You can't be a fanatic, but you should have your bases covered. Once you have your bases covered physically, right? And, and what I'm about to say should probably precede this, get your soul in order, get your spiritual life in order. Why get your spiritual life in order? I'll give you a couple practical reasons why. Number one is which you can die. Be prepared to die. We should always be prepared to die. Do you ever see that coin that I showed once before? It says Memento Mori, it has a skull on it. And you ever talk about how like, you know, the, the men of old, like the saints, they would have um, a skull sitting on their desk while they're writing. Well, it was always to remind them that death is before them at all times. We're living in a time, we're living in an age, and we're living in a culture where death has been carted off and sanitized. And we're, we're either to pretend like it doesn't exist uh, or to be quiet about it, right? There's, there's a taboo against death, even so much so that we don't kill our own food. We don't prepare our own dead, right? We hire someone and they do it in a special place and then somebody else buries them. I'd like to be buried on my own, on my own land here. I got to check with the laws and stuff, right? Let me die in my own bed and let my family wrap me up and bury me, right? That's what we did prior to outsourcing everything to government and corporations, right? Why do we need somebody to do that? Anyway, I'm ranting. The point is, I think we need to become a little bit more familiar with and have a healthy respect for the fact that we're going to die. Not a fear, but a fact that we're going to die. They say that uh, this is a Catholic, and I know you're Catholic too. There's, a, there's this Catholic saying that it's hard to live as a Catholic, but easy to die. What does that mean? It's hard to live as a Catholic, but it's easy to die as a Catholic. Why is that? That's because to live as a Catholic means to live with death on your mind constantly, mortifying yourself, constantly making yourself, humbling yourself, you know, through fasting, uh, humbling yourself by mortification of the senses, by not getting involved with all kinds of sensual sins, right? So there's like, it's challenging because you're trying to live a life of grace. You're trying to live a life in a state of grace. You're trying to live a mortal, a, a, a moral upright life. That's challenging. It's hard to do, especially in a world that's as perverse, perverted, and the sin is so per pervasive as it is right now. Not easy to do. Not saying that I've even got it nailed down because I still have to repent on my knees every day. But with that all being said, the Catholic worldview is that we are pilgrims. We are here 
sojourning in a foreign land. We're not to build our kingdom here, per se. This is not the end all be all and don't fall too much in love with it because you're going to die. So live your life like you're going to die. Live your life with reverence to the eternal, to death, right? We must all, this is um, uh, uh, St. Liguori, St. Liguori, Alphonse. If you ever get a chance to read On Death by St. Alphonsus Liguori, <laughs> such a cool guy. He's, he got, I have a whole book on thoughts on death by St. Alphonsus Liguori. But essentially, it's just, it's um, inspiration to live your life in a way that honors your death. You're going to die. If there's a kinetic war or not, you're going to die. You're going to die. You're probably, you might die of cancer. You might die of a heart attack, right? I'm, I'm starting to think these days that that's probably how I'm going to go, heart attack. I don't know why. But I got this sense that that's probably what it's going to be. Uh, but it doesn't matter because that's just my own fallen nature. And this is your fallen nature, making you worried about something that, may or may not snuff out your life, but that shouldn't be your concern. It should be, am I living in a state of grace? Go to confession. Go to confession regularly. It's been a month for me. I'm going to go this weekend. Probably go Saturday. Go to confession. Receive the Eucharist. Pray on your knees. Pray the rosary, right? Store up some divine preps, right? There's all, we're always talking about prepping here, prepping here, prepping here. But all of that needs to be preceded, preceded by a divine preparation, a spiritual preparation. I, I cannot emphasize enough how important that is, although it's something that we all overlook, including myself, like I say, I got to remind myself a lot of times to come back. The persecution towards Christians, I would invite you also to read books like uh, Gulag Archipelago, uh, Alexander Solzhenitsky, right? Live Not By Lies by Rob Dreher. These are books that give an account of Christian martyrs as they live through the previous Bolshevik revolution. What we're experiencing right now, you know, the Eastern Russian or Eastern Europe Russian revolution in the 19 teens, right? The early 20th century. We're experiencing the same exact thing, which is totalitarianism, but instead of hard totalitarianism, it's soft totalitarianism, as is described by Rob Dreher in Live Not By Lies. Essentially, we are so woke that we're accepting totalitarianism. We're so effeminate that we're accepting surveillance. Like back in the day, they needed to like tap your house to surveil you and they would have to send spies. Well, they don't need to do that anymore because look, everybody hearing everything that I'm saying right through here. And if you got an iPhone, I'm sure they're listening to you. And if you have a Siri or if you have an Alexa, we are being surveilled. I think that's what the, out, the rollout of all this uh, social media technology or this, this um, communication technology post 9-11 is really all about. It's surveillance and tracking. But how are we being surveilled and tracked? Because of expediency, because of effeminacy, because it's fun, because it's cool, because everybody's doing it, because it's entertaining, because it's convenient. So we got to be careful, but we are moving towards a totalitarian state, except it's not localized. It's generalized. It's the world. It's the new world order. And in order for the new world order to unfold, they have to destroy America. America is the only thing that stands in the way of the new world order. For many reasons, including our constitution, which it seems to have been destroyed, seems to be ignored completely, but it still is the law of the land, right? And I'm not even so sure because, you know, there are those, I've heard that America is not actually even under the constitution any longer since uh, the, the advent of the Federal Reserve Bank in 1914, we then became the United, State, the United Corporation of America, right? And if you have a social security number, you are actually a corporate entity rather than your own sovereign being. So there's a lot of diabolical twists to this whole damn thing. But the bottom line is we're still armed. We're still armed. And we go back to what we began this whole conversation about. This whole conversation about preparing to defend yourself. And there is something as a holy war, right? Don't let Christian pacifists have you believe that it's better to lay down and be trampled upon. That is, that's not the message of Jesus, even though he went to the cross his sacrifice was of a totally different supernatural nature than really what's expected of us. We are to carry our cross, 
but we are also to stand up for what's right, right? This is the true social justice. True social justice is what you and I are talking about. Not this woke garbage where they're, you know, wanting boys to be able to go into girls' bathrooms and, you know, weird perverted stuff like that. That's secular um, social justice. Real social justice is, like I said, the, the, you know, noble war. And so we've got to fight. But like I said, the, uh, the last... The last stand against New World Order is America, but they may take us down. I make no bones about that. I have no illusions about that. I'm not going to fool myself into thinking that we can, that it's going to be all hunky dory and that we're going to be saved. That may not be the case, but be, so be prepared to die, be prepared to fight. And, uh, and don't be too attached. Right. That's really, that's really my advice on that. It's not, it's not revolutionary pump your fist in the air go and get them it's a matter of prudence it's a matter of being realistic he says uh i've been seeing documentaries of world war ii i can't help but the compare the times of then it is today you know we have a ps here also which is, i guess is sort of an aside but that was my opinion on all of that he says i started the sex fast since the last question and my future wife, uh, I call her my wife. We haven't gotten married yet, but planning for in a couple of months, I've been able to make it seven or eight days by the seven or eighth day. My wife can't help herself and begins to caress and initiate contact. That being said, the heated arguments have not occurred since then. And she's been far more feminine in the home. Well, I don't want to pollute this video by going down a rant on that but in a way i could just basically say see i told you so if we stop giving our power away to women through sex they start to get worried and then they will very quickly change their attitude towards us the, the, the minute a woman knows that she's got you by the balls literally because you need her sex and you're simping for her even if she's your wife you live under her mantle man needs to be able to stand firm without it so that he can see her rightly and so that there's a um, rightly a, a, a divine order in the home. And you see how feminine she, she starts to become because she knows she can't rule over you with the puss. So, but anyway, that was a PS and I wanna go too far down that road, dude. Go get your guns, learn how to use them, protect yourself, but also most importantly, get your spiritual life in order. Commune with the divine, pray every day, receive absolution and stay in a state of grace. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.